Sleeping Dragon King Chronicles by Kenneth Flanders Jr. Narrated by Peter Widener. Copyright 2020, Kenneth Flanders Jr. All rights reserved. Chapter Zero, Futures Past. It's time. Are you ready? The young Nikomata asked, her ears twitching beneath her hooded cloak. She was speaking to a young man who was sitting near the edge of a cliff, gazing out across the distance. For a moment, he didn't show any sign of acknowledgement. Perhaps he was pulled into the beauty of the sunset, the crimson and gold colors that only heaven can provide prior to dusk. In actuality, the young man, though his body was still and calm, struggled with racing thoughts. His heart was brimming with the vibrancy of raw emotion. His feelings were like a torrent, his eyes filled with dangerous energy and hardened resolve. Thoughts of blood, tears, and anguish bubbled up within his heart and burst forth painting vivid memories of those he'd lost along the way. You're a lot like me. You hold in a great deal because you've never felt safe enough to be yourself. It's... it's okay. Just let it out. The young man clenched his fist as tears began to wet his cheeks, a soft breeze cooling his face in the process. You always cry, and that's okay. But just for once, really make an effort. I know you can do it, because I used to be just like you. The young man got to his feet, wiping a solitary tear from his cheek as he pulled the hood of his cloak down across his shoulders. Yeah, let's go. Chapter 1. Waking Sleep Ryuga! The voice of a woman could be heard screaming, her voice piercing the darkness, though her face was shrouded by darkness. Ryuga could easily discern her identity. It was a person he could never forget, one his mind drifted to with every still moment of the day. Mother! Mother! The young boy reached out, his hands outstretched as the jaws of a large, ominous creature closed in. It was the same dream, lingering memories that often played out in his psyche. He'd had enough, or rather his heart did. I... I hate dreaming, he whispered to himself as he sat up in his bed. There he remained motionless for quite some time as he attempted to quiet the stirring emotions now mingling within his heart. Anger, sadness, regret. These feelings piled themselves on until he could do little else but get his day started, as he always did. Breakfast first, always breakfast, then a shower and rush to get dressed. Even with a leisurely pace, he always had some extra time to linger about. So much like any other school day, the boy known as Ryuga decided to switch on his television to watch the news. He took his place at the kitchen table, as he often did, and pulled out a crossword puzzle, one of many he often kept stashed in his coat pocket. He could hear his classmate, Gates, in the back of his mind. Old man, the customary remark each time Ryuga pulled a crossword out in front of his fellow students. This made him smile a bit, just for a moment. Soon he was on his way. He double-checked before setting out. Backpack, uniform complete, a packed lunch. As he walked to his front door, he paused for a moment, turning to face a picture on the nearby counter. Ryuga bowed his head, offering up a prayer for the dark-haired, bright-eyed woman who was smiling so carefree in the photograph. She was the focal point of the picture, although there was another person with their arm draped over her shoulder. His face was ripped away by the edge. Just the thought of that bastard made Ryuga's blood boil. But his anger only lasted for a brief moment as his thoughts turned to his mother once more. Bye, Mom, Ryuga said in a solemn, sad expression on his face as he swung his overcoat over his shoulder and exited his home. Within minutes, Ryuga was on his way, as were most of the teens in his area. The school wasn't very far, so he and the others from his neighborhood walked to their destination. Along the way, he saw the usual suspects. Linda, a blonde-haired, foreign exchange student who was well-liked by her classmates. As usual, she had a large group of girls surrounding her. 
Ryuga called these the Hive, with Linda as the queen bee at the center. Next was Ichigo, a tall, skinny boy who wore glasses, and his good friend Gates, a short, warm-hearted, and friendly teen. Gates, whose real name was Ryuji, had been Ichigo's friend since Ryuga could remember. But the two shared such a similar name, Ryuga and Ryuji. Everyone in the class called Ryuji by his last name. And then there was Tarad. Tarad was your typical jock, big on brawn, but small on intellect. Like most days, Ryuga just pulled his headset over his ears and continued on his way, ignoring everyone and everything on his way to school. In virtually no time, Ryuga and the others were entering the large gates of their school, Garden Haven Academy. Though the school was considered normal by all standards, it had a reputation for creating students who would go on to excel in life. As such, it had many amenities that other schools would be hard-pressed to obtain. As the students settled into 3A, the homeroom class for Ryuga and his classmates, Ryuga immediately took note of two extra desks in the back row. Hmm, he thought to himself just seconds before the teacher entered the room, in tow with two new additions to the classroom. Attention class, Miss Konami began. Today we have not one, but two new transfer students. 3A is really growing, hmm? Miss Konami was a young lady in her early 20s. Her heart-shaped face was framed by circular spectacles and a jovial smile most times. Her short, bowl-cut hair made her head resemble something of an acorn, which is why many of the students in the class called her Acorn Queen behind her back. Ryuga, however, had no problem with Miss Konami, as she had always been kind to him, perhaps a bit too kind for his liking at times. First up is Akira. Akira, please introduce yourself, Miss Konami added. Of the two students, the young girl known as Akira stepped forward. Her skin was fair, her hair jet black and shiny. In fact, it was the first thing Ryuga noticed about her. Next were her sky blue eyes. They had a peculiar look to them. It was as if he was staring into a kaleidoscope of colors. Immediately, he was drawn into them. Then, their gazes met. It was like a jolt of energy tingling from within. Ryuga became lost for just an instant. He was completely disarmed in that moment as Akira smiled gently, forcing Ryuga to blush. He quickly bowed his head in an attempt to avert his gaze. Just then, the impact of a kick to the side of his desk jolted Ryuga back into reality. Huh. Don't get carried away, loser. A girl like that would never be interested in you. It was Jin, one of Tarad's jock buddies. He was one of the people who formed what Ryuga liked to call the jockstrap squad. They ate together, harassed and bullied people together, probably even took shits together. This thought caused a creepy smile to spread across Ryuga's face, which in turn won another insult from confused Jin. Creep. Ugh. While daydreaming, Ryuga had managed to completely miss Akira's introduction. Next up was the other transfer student. His name was David Jones, a short, chubby kid from America. His face was boyish, which by extension made him seem much younger than he really was. The fact that he had freckles also didn't help. Well, one out of two isn't bad. One beauty, one more nerd, Jin whispered to his nearby associates. The two students took their place in the back row of the classroom before Miss Konami continued. Linda, I'd like you to show our two newest additions around for the remainder of the day and help them out. As a class representative, it falls upon you. Got it, Miss Konami, Linda said with a beaming smile. How fake, Ryuga thought to himself. She's always like this, two-faced. The day's lesson was much like any other. Ryuga often spent his time staring out of the window, and today was no exception. However, he couldn't help but find his mind drawn to the new student, Akira. Occasionally, he would turn to sneak a peek at her. More often than not, Jin's smug face would be there attempting to cock block. But every now and then, Akira would also be staring in his direction. Each time she would smile, forcing Ryuga to blush as well. Ryuga wasn't really the romantic type. More often than not, he would prefer to choose a vantage point to observe others rather than get involved in class politics. Things were better, simpler that way. After observing the flow of the classroom, there were basically three groups of people with any measure of influence. The jocks, the queens, 
and the used. Ryuga fell into group number three. The jocks and queens were pretty self-explanatory, but the used? Well, that was a bit different. Essentially, as long as you could provide some service or function to either group, you'd be left alone to a certain degree. Or rather, your experience would be more pleasant. Because Ryuga was positioned next to Jin, and Jin was as dumb as a box of rocks, it put Ryuga in a position to be useful. By allowing Jin to take his homework, Ryuga actually made copies and pretended that Jin was pulling one over on him to inflate Jin's ego. Jin could obtain passing grades. Because Jin could pass tests without studying, Ryuga was able to navigate his school life without much trouble, which was exactly how he liked it. These three social groups were sort of like an unspoken hierarchy. Everyone else was just considered normies. And while Ryuga had the mental acuity to navigate this social hierarchy, he simply refrained from doing so. There were many times where he'd been approached after having been deemed cool enough, but there was just something that didn't sit right with Ryuga. They just, all of them, seemed so basic. Perhaps it was due to the level of maturity. Ryuga simply couldn't bring himself to care about the things other students his age were worried over. Perhaps it was due to the fact that their home lives were very different. Everyone else had mothers, fathers, brothers, and sisters. Ryuga had empty halls and bedrooms, memories that haunted him in the night, regrets, and only pictures to see him off in the morning. His thoughts were wandering into a territory he didn't want to venture, so he decided to change his line of thought. I wonder, what group Akira will fall into, he whispered to himself as he gazed out of the window to his left. He wasn't looking at anything in particular. Perhaps he was wishing the sky would open and take him away. Maybe he was seeking some answer for the circumstances of his life. Maybe he just wanted to be as light and weightless as a cloud. Soon it was lunchtime, and Ryugo would have to answer as to his earlier ponderance. Um, hello. Ryugo was staring out of the window when a female voice pulled him from his thoughts. Uh, uh, hi. Uh, oh, hello. Ryugo was surprised to see that Akira was standing next to his desk, a pleasant smile on her face. I noticed you're staring out of the window quite often. Is there something interesting out there? Akira said as she leaned over his desk and peered out of the window. Hmm? Huh? No. Ryuga said as his face grew flushed slightly. A sweet-smelling scent wafted over, and though he couldn't place it, Ryuga recognized it as floral. Oh, okay, well, I just wanted to say hello. I'm Akira, as you know. Akira said as she took a couple of steps back to correct her balance. Ryuga. Oh. I like that name, Akira said as their eyes met once more. Ryuga couldn't put his finger on it, but it was as if her gaze was slowly pulling him in. Akira! Linda's voice pierced the air, completely interrupting the mood. Let's go have lunch, she said, grabbing Akira by the arm and dragging her away before she could even respond. Uh, okay, Akira said as she turned to wave to Ryuga. Don't even think about it, loser. Tarad's deep voice growled as he stepped in front of Ryuga. Their eyes met as Ryuga gazed upwards. Something about their eye contact seemed to agitate Tarad. Perhaps it was due to the fact that he could tell Ryuga didn't genuinely care one way or the other about his intimidation tactics. Freak! You and your creepy eyes! Tarad said as he folded his arms and turned around to walk out of the classroom with his usual bunch. <laughs> Ryuga grunted to himself. Truthfully, the last thing on his mind was Tarad, or Linda. Even Akira wasn't enough to fully distract his mind, or his heart. Four days, Ryuga muttered to himself as sadness washed over him while he continued to gaze.